on the 4th of October 1999, a documentary series produced by the BBC would revolutionise the way we as people view television, nature documentaries and extinct organisms as a whole. Walking with Dinosaurs. This six-part documentary series showcases the lives of computer-generated extinct organisms in the style of a traditional nature documentary, with narration done by Kenneth Branagh, whose smooth, calming voice fits the tone of the documentary perfectly. In my humble opinion, even 20 years after its original release, Walking with Dinosaurs is the best portrayal of extinct animals we have ever seen on screen, and I would be doing it a huge disservice for not acknowledging the enormous impact this series has had both on me and many others. I can barely put into words how much I adore this series, but I'm going to try my best as I review each of the six episodes individually over the next six weeks, coinciding with their original air dates 20 years ago. With all that said, on the 4th of October 2019, let's look into episode 1, New Blood, for Walking With Dinosaurs 20 year anniversary. Immediately, the opening sequence is fantastic. The bombastic music and the colourful transparent imagery of the creatures we're about to see are an incredible spectacle to behold. The first episode starts off with a brief introduction to the time of the dinosaurs and the three time periods of the Mesozoic era, the Cretaceous, the Jurassic and lastly the Triassic 220 million years ago, which is when this episode takes place. It's incredibly fun to watch the land morph into different shapes as time passes and it does a great job of easing the audience into the world and teasing some of the creatures that will appear in later episodes without spoiling too much of the magic. Once we reach the Triassic, the tone is immediately made apparent right as the title appears, Heat and Bloodshed, showing scenes of various animals crossing vast deserts as we are thrust into a world about to endure a heavy dry season. The theming is also made very apparent, as the narration provides a brief backstory of the world of Pangaea, a world comprised of all the planet's continents combined to form one giant landmass that has seen many experimentations in the evolution that left no descendants. However, those that have survived are now all in combat for supremacy over the land, and among them are the first dinosaurs. Note how only one is present at the beginning, by the way. The scene introducing us to the early dinosaur, Coelophysis, is essentially perfect. It shows us that despite its diminutive appearance, they are perfectly adapted for life in this harsh world. This, however, does not mean that they are top dog. In the next scene, we're introduced to another denizen of Pangaea that couldn't be more different to the fleet-footed, gracile Coelophysis, Placerias, a herbivorous stem mammal whose kind were once widespread but are now on the brink of extinction. While they appear as a large herd now, throughout the episode's runtime, we see their screen time slowly dwindle, acting as fitting symbolism for their kind's ultimate fate. The foreshadowing of Coelophysis supposedly preying on Placerias, despite being unrealistic and not being shown on screen, really enhances the underlying themes of natural selection in this episode's storyline. The next scene introduces us to the Cynodont, another stem mammal, but very different to the large lumbering Placerias. This animal is shown to be much more mammalian by comparison, being seen caring for and nurturing their young as modern mammals do, yet also showcasing its reptilian qualities as well. The following scene, where we see the Postosuchus in all its glory, is practically flawless. Modern paleontological advancements aside, she is shown to easily be the top predator, yet far from invincible. While she successfully attacks a Placerias, her weakness is also shown. Being slow means she is forced to ambush prey. In the next scene, we are introduced to the Pterosaur Petinosaurus, a group of reptiles closely related 
to the dinosaurs that became the first vertebrates to fly, usurping the previously untouchable flying insects, such as dragonflies, from their place as top predator. This scene also denotes both the future success of the pterosaurs, as well as how Pangaea allows animals of all continents to converge, as Pitinosaurus is shown in North America, yet hails from Europe. The scene that shows the Postosuchus search for water is especially effective in that it further shows how the top predator still has to drink like any other animal. The narration also foreshadows a later scene, stating that the only thing she fears is another Postosuchus. The Patinosaurus bath scene is also similar to the previous scene, in that it shows an extinct animal partaking in a more trivial activity, showing that nature is not always about constant fighting, and I really like it for this reason. The next scene shows the beginning of a conflict that will be prevalent throughout the rest of the episode. The Coelophysis discover the Cynodont nest, and the adults ward them off at first, but this will not last. This could be seen as symbolic of how the stem mammals were once so dominant on Earth, and yet are now at the mercy of the dinosaurs as they slowly begin to take over, becoming more numerous in every scene. The Postosuchus, having received a tusk wound on her leg, further shows how vulnerable this predator is as she fails to ambush the Placerias and they ward her off. The Coelophysis eating the baby Cynodont shows how merciless nature truly can be sometimes, and shows how the dinosaurs are coming to dominate the land again. The scene foreshadowed earlier shows a male Postosuchus usurping the female we have been following as he takes advantage of her poor condition and steals her territory, showing a speculative behaviour of urinating to mark his new turf. I'd also like to take a moment to praise the sound design. The ambience of insects and various animal calls in the background really immerse you in this world. The sounds of the creatures are fantastic. The Coelophysis especially has a very unique bird-like sound to it, and I love it. Seeing the Cynodonts eating their own young is shocking, but is justified, as it makes perfect sense and is the most logical thing for them to do, given their current situation of needing to move, now the dinosaurs have found their nest. The Coelophysis discovering the torpor lungfish is another scene I really appreciate, as it showcases other, more familiar animals in this prehistoric world, as well as how numerous the dinosaurs have now become compared to the beginning. This point is really driven home in the next scene, as we see a huge group of them flock together to eat the dying female Postosuchus, who has lost the use of her back legs. Seeing her fall from grace is very humbling and makes us sympathise with an extinct CG animal, and the use of practical effects is also really cool. This is also the last time we see the Placerias, aka the other evolutionary dead end, along with the Postosuchus, symbolising their eventual extinction. The Cynodonts, however, cling on by eating a baby Coelophysis. The irony is highly symbolic of how their future mammal descendants will survive, on the edges of a world ruled by dinosaurs. Seeing the water finally return to the Scorched Valley is very satisfying, and Ben Bartlett's triumphant score is perfect accompaniment to such a scene. The final scene is just wonderful. We see how many Coelophysis have survived the drought, whilst the other animals in the episode are nowhere to be seen before seeing a huge herd of Platyosaurus. Massive dinosaurs, very unlike Coelophysis, showing both their diversity, size, and majesty all at once. As the narration so eloquently puts it, the age of the dinosaurs has dawned. New Blood is amazing, not just in what it shows, but in what it doesn't show. The symbolism is very strong, yet also very subtle, and acts as an incredible start to a wonderful series. I also reviewed a figure based on an animal that appeared in this episode, the Safari LTD Postosuchus. A link to said review will be in the end card in just a moment. Thank you all so much for watching. Let's continue to celebrate 20 years on Walking with Dinosaurs together next time when I review episode 2, Time of the Titans. Thank you, bye bye now.